Hey yo, what is up everyone with another ride test from the event. This time I managed to get my hands on a 2022 Royal Enfield Himalayan. I've been wanting to ride this bike for a very long time because it's a small 400cc adventure bike that's actually very light and has a classic style engine with an air-cooled engine, single cylinder, thumper, not too powerful actually not powerful at all but it's a light bike with 19 inch front wheel 17 on the rear decent ground clearance a classic normal cradle frame with some crash bars here let's get some specs on it so in terms of engine we have a 411 cc single cylinder air cooled thumper uh, it is fuel injected and it puts out about let's see where was it 24 horsepower and 32 newton meters of torque now the torque is available maximum torque is reached at 4000 rpm so it's a pretty torquey motor and the bike in terms of weight it's 200 kilograms now that's not quite light but the bulk of the weight is all down here so it's pretty low fuel tank is 15 liters like i've said up front we have a 21 inch wheel in the back let's see what it is it's a 17 inch wheel so 21 and 17 uh decent suspension travel i don't know the exact specs let me see oh i have them here so 200 millimeter front travel and 180 millimeter rear travel now that's not groundbreaking but it is decent in terms of travel monoshock on the rear normal fork on the front single disc up front single disc in the back front and rear abs little windshield of honestly a quite nice design dashboard we have here something to that you can you can connect your phone to and it shows you arrows for your gps with google maps we have a ref counter we have our idiot lights we have our speedometer fuel gauge a compass and here we have on the digital display we have outside temperature time odometer trip a let's see if i press this oh this is the abs button so we have switchable abs let's see this what does it change nothing so we have trip a average speed trip b trip b average speed and that's it so trip a and trip a so we you have two trips and their average speeds and a gear position indicator so that's pretty much it for the dash in terms of controls honestly they look the, like the controls on sims on the nht <laughs> that's funny anyway enough blabbering i want to ride this thing come on Let's bring the thumper to life. Oh, the classic sound of the thumper. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> All right, let's take it for a spin. We're just gonna do a short little ride on the mountain road, the same road I took the Imperiale, the same road I took the Desert X. Let's see how this thing can handle it. 20, 24 brake horsepower and 32 newton meters of torque. And I can already use that torque because I am in second gear and just left it in second gear, tractored right onto the road. You know, for a 200 kilogram bike, it feels awfully light. It feels, I don't know, 160, 150 kilograms. I'm surprised it weighs 200 because it feels so small and nimble and flickable. Which is weird for a cradle frame, but it, it doesn't feel intimidating at all. And the fact that I can keep it at low RPM, now currently I'm already in top gear fifth gear and i'm doing 70 kilometers an hour at 3000 rpm so i think cruising speed for this bad boy is gonna be 
is gonna be somewhere around 100 110 kilometers an hour but that's enough that's enough I've done a trip with a lot less cruising speed but it's just so funny how it tractors everywhere sounds like a little tractor just let's see if we can get an overtake him Come on, I want some open roads. This is where the power of the Desert X would come in handy, but... Come on, Royal Enfield. See? It can do overtakes. You just have to... You just have to take your time and pull on the throttle. Fit gear. In terms of wind protection, there are there is some wind protection on my chest. My hands are exposed, my helmet is exposed. I wanna get it up to a hundred. Come on, 80. How do how does she cruise at a hundred? 80, 90? A hundred, a hundred and five thousand RPM. Red line is at 6,500. Yeah, about a hundred, a hundred and ten is your cruising speed. But for a bike like this, that's enough. <laughs> Honestly, on a cradle frame, I wouldn't want to be cruising at 160. I don't know why. I just wouldn't want to be cruising at 160. Uh, what is amazing to me is how light it feels for a cradle frame. Now, the Benelli, the Imperiale felt like an old bike, like a... Basically, it felt like it was made out of iron. But this feels a lot more nimbler. It's surprisingly easy and I just got on it and I'm, I think I'm faster through these corners than I was on the Desert X, which is stupid, but... It is what it is. In terms of suspension on the road, it's fairly composed. The bumps do not unsettle it. Even bumps in corners are pretty easily managed. It's, it's not groundbreaking by any means. It's just a normal suspension that does its job like any suspension should do. Controls the brakes, the front brake is... Eh, it's there. Okay, we'll say the front brake is there. <laughs> now, compared to something like uh, the Desert X or even the Imperiale, the front brake on the Imperiale was a little bit better. But otherwise, climbing up the mountain through the forest, up a gear. Yeah, you can have a lot of fun with this thing, basically. You can have a lot of fun. Let's see now with switchback. So let's get on the brakes. Hard on the brakes. Yeah, the brakes are there. We'll, we'll call them there. We'll call them there. They're nothing to write home about. We'll just call them there. They're, the brakes are present. The gearbox is nice and smooth. A little bit clunky, but it gives you kind of that old school vibe it's not unpleasant so it's a little bit clunky but not un in the unpleasant kind it's in the i don't know the mechanical clickety kind over 6000 now it does say peak power at 6500 but honestly over 6000 it kind of there's kind of not much left in there. But on this kind of road, the engine is just peppy enough that you can have some fun. We'll see if we can get past cars uphill. That's what I'm curious about. Can we get past cars uphill? Let's use the torque. Let's get a gear. 
Come on! Yeah, you can! You really have to put on the pull on the throttle, although you really have to pull on the throttle, but yeah, you can do some overtaking. But I like the gearbox, honestly. I like the sound of the engine. Would have liked a little bit more torque. Somehow the the Imperiale felt a little bit more torque here. Although it does, I don't I don't know. It had 29 newton meters of torque. This has 31. I think this may be heavier. But somehow that felt a little bit more torque here. But I like the way uh, the gearbox feels. It's just a satisfying click every time you change gears and I like the way it takes its corners. It's so easy to tuck it into a corner. Ah, this is such a nice little bike. <laughs> have some fun with this thing down a cog again I really like that on a mountain road like this I get to use the gearbox second and third gear a lot I think this is the closest motorcycle I've ridden all weekend that gives me the same confidence to take the bends as my scooter and that's saying a lot it means the bike is very approachable very easy to ride it's very approachable it's very friendly yep 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 I thought I would like it looking at the spec sheet I thought I would like it and I do I do like it <laughs> but then again what bike don't I like come on oh Come on, little Enfield. It is fun. Downshifts are easy to rev match. You don't have a lot of revs to play with, so they're easy to rev match. You don't have to go full throttle to use the torque. That's what I like. So I'm just using half throttle. And the difference between half and full throttle when you're on the torque band, it's... Uh, it's pretty non-existent, so why go full throttle when you can just go half throttle? Why did I go to first gear? I don't know. Keep it in second. Tuck it in, power out, ride the torque. Yeah, if you ride around the torque, it's quite fun. And you have the noise of the thumper. Just chugging away like a little locomotive. People would only drive. Come on, I want to enjoy myself. Wonderful place for test rides. It will shift fast, you just have to be fast with the shifter. And we're getting close to our turnaround point. And we have a truck. I don't want a truck. Come on, first gear. That's it. What a nice little bike. <laughs> And also, come on, we have a center stand. This is it, the Enfield Himalayan. A nice little adventure bike for the adventure beginner. Honestly, it's so confidence inspiring and it's, it's funny to look at it. This is metal, everything is metal. Apart from this, this is the only plastic on the bike. And this, yes, the fender is plastic, plastic, but that's it. 
So plastic on the fenders, plastic on the windscreen, plastic on the tail and that's it. This is, oh it's plastic. But this is metal, everything down there is metal. Very little plastic on this bike. Like an old school motorcycle. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the little Himalayan. It's a really funny, funky little bike. Here we can have it for about just under 6,000 euros. For prices in your markets, check your own local markets. But it's a funky little bike. Are there better bikes out there? Sure. Are there more powerful bikes out there? Sure. But what ADV bike has this old thumper sound? This old school thumper sound. So if you want something like a I don't know, like a Benelli Imperiale or like a Royal Enfield Meteor with a classic sound, the old thumper classic sound, but still you want to do some long distance trips, this is actually quite nice. 100, 110 kilometers an hour is about 5000 RPM, that's a decent cruising speed. If you want more, then go for something with a bigger engine, but this is what this thing is. Thank you all for watching, for liking the videos and for subscribing. Hope you enjoyed the little Himalayan and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care out there and ride safe. Goodbye. <laughs>